Hello, everyone. So today we have Marissa Lester from the University of North Carolina School of Dentistry. Marissa, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing good. Doing as, as, as great as I can. You know? Exactly. During the COVID-19 <laughs> season. Exactly, exactly. We are staying positive throughout it all. But uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and go ahead and get started. Um, so if you can, please give us a, a brief summary of your dental school journey. So basically, you know, where you're from, where you went to undergrad, uh, what did you major in, and did you take a year off? All right. So as you said, my name is Marissa Lester. I'm a third-year dental student at the University of North Carolina School of Dentistry. I attended undergrad at Limestone College in Gaffney, South Carolina, nice. um, where I played basketball there. So I was on a collegiate basketball scholarship, and I um, majored in biology. Okay. And then after that, I graduated, and I took one year off. So, yes, I took a gap year. So what did you do in that gap year? Like, did you do like any type of like, ex like not externship, but like a fellowship or anything or? Yeah. So during my gap year, actually my school had nominated me for the NCAA woman of the year. Oh, awesome. And so I did a lot of stuff with the NCAA. They flew us out to Indiana and pretty much just met with like the president of the um, NCAA and lots of other like powerful women who had been doing a lot of different things um, academically, athletically, and within leadership and in their community. So I did that for a little period of time, and then I actually took my DAT after I graduated, mm. and then I also became the teen camp counselor, because I just love children so much, so I ended up doing that, and um, yeah, pretty awesome. much just, you know, traveled a little bit and things like that. Okay, so you took your DAT on your off year, your gap year. Yes. Um, so, you know, of course, pre dents always want to ask us, like, what's the, what's the number one tip on how to do well on our DAT? Right. What would you recommend to them? Right. So I would say there's so many resources out there, but just try to scan around and just pick one or two. Yeah. Because if you're trying to do like a million different templates, a million different programs, it's easy for you to maybe look at the same material over and over again, but not get the all encompassing stuff that you need in order to do well in your DAT. So definitely that. And then I would also say just set a schedule. So for me, I woke up every morning um, like super early and you know, did my devotion, read my Bible, and then I just studied. And I had like hours that were blocked out to do maybe like the quantitative, like reason, just different things like that, so that I wasn't just sitting there looking at the math or sitting there looking at the organic chemistry and the biology and all that different stuff for too long. So I just broke it up and did it like that. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Awesome. This will kind of work for me. Okay. And so. Um, granted, I know you were traveling, you were doing a lot, your off year, your gap year, mm -hmm. but I want to ask, were there any type of like pre-dental programs that your school offers that you were able to attain or that you know of in general? Yeah, so the UNC um, School of Dentistry, we have the MED program, and then we also have SCP program. And as I told you all, I'm from Georgia, so I was not aware of either of those programs before I applied and attended UNC. Mm -hmm. And so I was a uh, a mentor this previous year, I worked with MED to just pretty much mentor those students and help them get into school. And so seeing all of my students like get in this cycle was really big, but the MED program is, it's phenomenal. Anybody who could do that, whether they're from in-state or out of state, I would definitely recommend that. It's a huge family feel and it really gets people matriculated into school. And in regards to myself personally, like I said, I'm from Georgia, so I did the SEP program, the Summer Educational Enrichment Program at the Dental College of Georgia. And I also did SMDP, which now is SHPEP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I did that at Howard University. Okay. So pretty much never had a summer off um, between basketball and, you know, just pursuing dentistry, right. but it all worked out. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, we have a lot in common. I went to Howard. Uh -huh. <laughs> I did the SMDP program, but I did it out in Cali. Oh, nice, uh, yeah, nice. And I'm from Georgia, too. <laughs> I didn't, okay, wow, yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's crazy, that's crazy. Anyway, but anyway, <laughs> um, so then you got your interview. Mm -hmm. And can you kind of walk us through what your interview day was like? Because, of course, like a lot of pre are extremely nervous about how it's going to flow and all those different things. So can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Yes, absolutely. So um, what I will say is that it has changed a little bit. So. Mm -hmm. When I interviewed originally, there was a September, October, November, and January interview, and it has 80 people within each interview. Mm. But now, this year, 
Last year, they did away with the January completely, but this year they brought January back. And so there were 80 people in September, 80 people in October, 80 people in November, and then 60 people in January, which is great. We really advocated for that January interview because I know some people might get their stuff in a little later. And it's really important to still have that January interview because I actually interviewed in January. Mm -hmm. So I interviewed in January. Like I said, when I did it, there were 80 people. Um, you get there like probably around 730 in the morning. And then you will go and they'll do financial things. They'll have three different people that you interview with. And those are usually 30 minutes, um, it's like sections each. Mm -hmm. So you interview with a faculty member, you interview with an adjunct faculty member, and then you interview with a student interviewer. And honestly, I still keep in contact with all of my people. The person who interviewed me, that was my faculty member, um, Dr. Allison, he went to Morehouse. And so then he ended up being my care clinic coordinator um, director. So all those connections just come back around. Yep. Um, after we had our interview sessions, they basically go over like how the school is changing, what the school has to offer and things of that, um, and things of that nature. So this year now, Dr. Reside and Dr. Ahmed are now like in charge of all of that. Mm -hmm. And the school is putting in new initiatives and doing new things to make it more innovative and to make it just a better collaborative effort amongst everybody. So now they have the ACT curriculum, which is something that they're um, rolling out to make sure you're an advocate, clinician, and thinker. And they're changing a lot of the labs to make them more like high technology, which our school is already like pretty high technology as it is, but they're doing more to just make sure their students continue to get the best education possible. That's amazing. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And so uh, how many other schools did you interview at? Yeah. So I took the non-traditional route, I guess, in many instances. I only applied to three schools. Okay. I interviewed at three schools, okay. and then I made my decision based on that. Um, I don't know if you want to know the exact schools. I no, well, no, no, not even so much, but okay. I do want to know, like, what was the thing about UNC that made you say, you know what, this is where I want to be? Yes. So I will say this, though. I won't necessarily go into, like, what the third school was, but of my top two schools that I interviewed with, like I said, I'm from Georgia, so I definitely had to, you know, apply to the home school. Right. And so um, with the Dental College of Georgia and with UNC, they both had pieces of socials or just some type of social the night before the um, interview, yep. which I thought just really sets the stage. It gets you out of your nervous jitters and it allows you to see um, what the school's about and to get advice from current students. Mm -hmm. So I like that. I felt like both of those really had a nice Southern hospitality feel to them. And I just felt welcome, um, honestly, at both of those places. So it was difficult for me to make a decision, to be honest. Okay. Um, but, but UNC won. <laughs> yeah, I mean, UNC ultimately won for me um, just because, like I said, they're, to me, they were really neck and neck. They're both great schools. But UNC has all of the specialties. I knew I was interested in pediatric dentistry. And so I, it's best to just be able to have like those world renowned people and just anybody that you can come in contact with and learn stuff about that. Like yeah. Dr. Lee is amazing. Mm -hmm. she's, the, um, she's the president of the American Academy of the Pediatric Dentistry wow. organization. And mm -hmm. she's the head of our school. So just being able to have her leadership and have her guidance and everybody, honestly, everybody within that department is phenomenal. And that's honestly the same way with all the other specialties. Mm -hmm. And to me too, I also really wanted diversity. Mm -hmm. So UNC really tries to have their school look like North Carolina population. And so with that being said, within my class, we have, um, I believe, 11 African-American students. We have maybe like seven um, Hispanic students or, you know, the Latinx community. Mm -hmm. We have just, just across the board, like we're well represented. Okay. to look like the population of North Carolina. Okay, that's awesome. That's yeah. Awesome. Okay, and so let's go into your first year of dental school, you know. Yeah. Um, can you kind of talk to us about your didactic classes? Uh, what was your clinical exposure? Um, mm -hmm. And did you all even pick up a handpiece at all, you know? Right, right. So first year we had dental anatomy. We had, after dental anatomy is when we did CLD, which is conservative operative, den operative dentistry, excuse me. Um, and with that being said, that's when you pick up your handpiece, but that wasn't until the spring semester. Mm -hmm. so all of this still first year, but like I said, the first semester we did more of the waxing, learned about the anatomy of dentistry. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and the teeth. And then after that, that's when we picked up the handpiece. And then after that, we had white coat ceremony, April, like right after we had finished all of our finals. Mm-hmm. And then we started working with patients that summer. Wow. So it happens really quickly. And that's another reason why I chose UNC as well, because I knew I would get that exposure to working with patients earlier on. Wow. Like I said, um, in addition to like the dental anatomy and the COD, we also had gross anatomy and histology and just many other different courses that help prepare you and get you ready to take, you know, well, I guess they're doing away with part one, but to take your dental exams. Mm-hmm. But other than that, like I said, you get working with patients soon and that is a huge advantage. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's very, that's very quickly. Yeah. But, um, but okay, so, you know, I think you've, you've kind of answered this to some extent mm-hmm. throughout the interview already, but mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you, like, what do you know to be unique about UNC? You know, I'm sure you have other friends at other dental schools. Like, what's something that you've seen that you're pretty sure, you know what, UNC is the only dental school that has something like this? Right, right. So, like I mentioned before, um, definitely they have all the, the specialties, which is huge. They have um, the diversity, which is important because some schools, you know, you might end up being the only minority person in your class or one of three, just whatever. Like they've really tried to diversify the class, which is huge. Um, We also have another thing that I like is the international trips. Mm -hmm. So we have 10 international trips and they gave me the opportunity to create one myself. So as a pre-dental student, I went to Tanzania with the Global Girls Empowerment Foundation, and I was just only able to give like oral, you know, oral presentations and talk about oral health like that, but I wasn't able to actually do any dentistry. So I kept telling the woman, um, Miss Benita, that I wanted to be able to come back and actually provide care. And Miss Benita was like, all right, let's make it happen. So I talked to the school about it. And last year was the first year that we had a trip to Tanzania to provide dental care. And for me, it really worked out because I was able to provide care to a lot of not only like just patients in general, but pediatric patients, which like I told you, it's like my passion. So it, it, it's amazing. I mean, you have lots of opportunities to pretty much do whatever you want to do and they will definitely support you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And so uh, last question of the interview, uh-huh. if you could go back in time, mm-hmm. you know, talk to yourself while you were going through the uh, application cycle, you know, right. what's that one piece of advice that you would give to yourself? Yeah, um, like I said before, I think I did things, um, I didn't really necessarily take the traditional route. Mm-hmm. So I know there's like student doctor network and all this other stuff out there. And for me, I didn't even really get on that stuff. Honestly, didn't even know half the stuff existed when I applied. Cause like yeah. I said, I went to a smaller um, undergrad institution, so they, gave me a lot of experience that I needed, but I also just did not know a lot of the different things that needed to happen in regards to dental school and applying. So like I said, that came to my advantage because I didn't know who I was competing against, what I was up against, and I just pretty much stayed true to myself. So I would just like to encourage people. And when I talk to my mentees, I always tell them that everything is gonna work out and like they're gonna become a dentist, right? They just need to remember who they are, remember their value and their worth, and remember that just as much as a school is interviewing them, they are also interviewing the school. Yes. So right. come with questions, you know, come prepared, but just remember that you have a lot to, you have a lot to offer. Yeah. So don't shy away from all the things you've done or don't shy away from anything because your experiences matter and that'll definitely help you succeed and be able to give back to the community like you want to do. Oh, amazing amazing thank you so much marissa if anybody has any questions what's the best way that they can reach out to you yeah the best way they can reach out to me probably social media um my instagram is march just like the month m-a-r-c-h for the number for greatness and then you can also email me at m as in mary b as in boy lester l-e-s-t-e-r at live l-i-v-e at unc.edu And um, I didn't really talk about this a lot, but I'm a National Health Service Corps um, scholar, and that really helps pay for school. That helps me to be able to do the things that I want to do, because as I mentioned, I'm from Marietta, Georgia, but both of my parents are from rural communities. So I always wanted to go back and give to Soford in Georgia and just pretty much transform that town um, as to where my parents are from. So if anybody has any questions about that and how the National Health Service Corps can help you with school and help you pretty much accomplish your goals, I'm willing to talk about that as well. 
huge resource, you know. Like, <laughs> I think so far, at least this se- this year, this season, mm-hmm. you might be the only scholarship recipient that we have had on. So people nice. definitely, definitely take advantage of this opportunity. Yes. Um, because that can that can help you out a lot. <laughs> yeah, it will help you out tremendously. I mean, they pay for everything. You get a twelve hundred dollar stipend. Mm. And I mean, you can't really beat that. All yeah. the stuff that they help with is it, just tremendous. And I'm definitely looking forward to being able to go back and serve in that rural population. Amazing, amazing. Marissa, thank you again from the Future DDS family. We really do appreciate your time today. Thank you. Of course, of course. Everybody, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. If you have any questions for Future DDS, you can reach out to us on Instagram at underscore Future DDS. And we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But until next time, see y'all later.